right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Zero Dark Nerdy, the world's most notorious pop culture podcast. This is your boy, Brian, a.k.a. El Nino, and today I'm joined with Jerry, a.k.a. Jadon, a.k.a. Jerry Warner. <laughs> and we have a very special guest in the building, the man of many voices. He has voiced over 250 animated characters and been in over a thousand commercials on top of that. The one, the only Rob Paulson. Thank you very much for joining us today, Rob. Yeah. Hello, Brian and Jerry. Thank you very much for uh, hooking me up in the water tower here. As you can tell, I don't look nearly as handsome in person as I do on the television. I, I am, I've got my nobody will bug me outfit on today. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get myself one of those. <laughs> yeah. You look like you've been out for a nice jog. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, I was out picking up an e-bike, an electric bike today. So um, it's been a fairly productive day, but not nearly as productive as it is Thanks to you guys and your uh, generosity in having me on. It's a pleasure to be here. Hey, we, we thank Aww. you so much for, for joining us today. And uh, I guess, you know, we're going to kind of jump back and forth here a little bit. Jerry's got some questions. I have some questions. Great. The, the audience out there, I'm sure we'll have some as well. But, oh, uh, you know, kind of give us a little bit of a rundown how you got into the industry. It's It's not one of those things to where when you're a little kid, you're like, hey, I want to. I mean, maybe it is for you, but. Oh. You know, like, hey, like I'm not a voice actor, but was it, you know, cartoons? Was it something that, like, I guess what I want to ask is at what point in your life were you like, this is something that I think I want to do and I, I could be very good at? Great question. Uh, I, like many other young folks, <clears throat> I made my way out here from Motown a um, hundred years ago. Actually, I, I moved out in June. I arrived here. In my little Honda with everything packed in and left my sweet mom crying like in the movies, crying on the um, front porch as I drove off in my little Honda and uh, came out here ostensibly to do live action and music. I was a singer first okay. uh, who became an actor and I'd done a lot of itinerant stage work. I spent, oh gosh, three years doing live music and theater around um, the country. Um, from the time I was 19 to about 22. So by the time I moved out here, I'd had a relatively large amount of experience for a young person. Um, and I came out here to do that, TV, music, commercials, whatever. Um, and that's what I was doing. Um, um, but I lived that axiom that luck is when opportunity meets preparation. Right. And so even though I had been creating characters inspired by the usual suspects, Peter Sellers, the Pythons, Jonathan Winters, you know, Carol Burnett, you name it. Uh, I came out to do what most folks do. And then in the middle of eh, probably the mid eighties, I had an opportunity to audition for cartoons and I just wanted to work. Yeah. Like everybody, I love cartoons. Um, and I knew that they were done here but they were done by a handful of actors in those days because there was not nearly the need for talent as there as there is now and and as there was um when things started popping you know um cartoons were relegated primarily to saturday morning in those days but my timing uh was excellent and had i stayed in la or even gone to new york um i would not have had the opportunity to try this out took me about two seconds when I did my first cartoons, which were G.I. Joe and Transformers. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Into the room. No I job. Yeah. I, thought, <laughs> cool. I, I recognized many actors mm -hmm. from episodic television, having grown up in the 70s. And I thought, oh, my God, I know that woman. I know that guy. I loved him on um, Bob Newhart. I loved her on uh, F Troop or lost in space things that i grew up watching mm -hmm. but the first thing that i realized having been uh just a, a young actor who like the rest of us are judged initially on the way we look do we look like we could have been hired to be so and so's boyfriend or so and so's son uh or a young husband whatever and i was doing episodic television hill street um macgyver uh saying elsewhere mm -hmm. and of course most of the time you're you're 
called to audition based on your look in general. That's still the way it is. And I totally get it. So right. not being limited by that was, oh my God, this is the coolest. It was the purest form of acting that we all experiment with. It really was like being in a giant, cool sandbox where all the only limitations you have are your talent, your skill set, your willingness to play, um, and the kindness of people to hire you. So it took me about three or four episodes of different cartoon shows to call my agent and say, hey, man, I don't want to stop auditioning for the traditional stuff, the on-camera stuff, but bring me more of this. Yeah. I am happy to audition for this. So here we are all these years later, and I'm still not limited by the way I look. I am, I'm, uh, it was great when I was a kid, and now as an old Hollywood dog, it's still cool. So that's how it happened. <laughs> um, and I'm really grateful that I have the sort of ego that doesn't require, you know, being famous. Uh, I've certainly cultivated a certain amount of tangential fame now and nice folks like you and others who are kind enough to have me on. And the fact that I'm just a, a grateful blue collar worker in the dream factory um, has served me well. And I'm really grateful that I decided to go down this road. I'm, I'm, I can't tell you how exciting it is to be able to go to work every day and not worry about the fact that my hair is gray, you know? <laughs> Gosh, that is a phenomenal story right there. And you, and you give people like myself hope because mm -hmm. like yourself, I'm one of those, I don't really, you know, if I'm in front of the camera, okay. I'm yeah. still used to it. But the main reason I even want to start the podcast is I'd rather have my voice heard than, yeah. than have let the them just fame, hear us. <laughs> right. And the notoriety. And just like you said, like, oh my gosh, how am I going to look when I go outside of the house today? The paparazzi. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I have friends who are very famous and, uh -huh. and it's a different animal. Don't get me wrong, you guys. I love it. Yeah. When people recognize me or make a fuss over me because my gig and my specific spot in our business does nothing but make people smile. I mean, when I say, nerve, <laughs> look what happens to you. And, and it's virtually impossible not to smile. Um, and that is the most glorious aspect of my career is now that you know, I've been around and, and uh, social media is such that people do pay attention a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But there is no, I mean, zero, dark nerdy, zero. Oh, I love it. Uh, <laughs> to my being recognized, none. Um, if it, I, I had a thing yesterday, I went to buy a bike rack yeah. in Pasadena, and I walked in the store about 20 minutes before it closed. There were five young guys there who were, you know, getting ready to close up for the night. And every one of them, I could see that they were kind of, nudging each other they all knew exactly who i was it was fantastic for them right and 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 by then by extension for me because it wasn't like them recognizing me was putting me out all i had to do was riff as yakko or carl or Raphael or pinky or you know whatever and they all were happy they all got a kick out of it so i am really grateful when people take the time to to say, excuse me, are you so and so? And I, I, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it because all it does is make people smile. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. I you really it. are correct. Yeah. Anytime you do, you know, any of the voices that we've heard throughout the, the years, and you know, Brian and I, we grew up hearing With your you. voice. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, we hear a narf, and you know, we just go bananas. Uh, we we <laughs> love it. You I'm really just, it I'm it brings a smile you. to our faces. Great. And you grew up with me as long as you say you didn't throw threw up with me, which is a different. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it is. Uh, it's very cool, Jerry. I, I'm blown away that people are so. Um, so I invested in these characters, I think that's the thing, you guys, that is the most wonderful um, aspect of my work that I really didn't know until the advent of, of comic cons and right. social media and having the opportunity to meet people your right. age and older than I, who have grown up watching these or their kids are grown up and their kids say, Hey man, you got to watch pinky in the brain or 
hey man, um, everybody likes Ninja Turtles and my grandparents watch it with our grandkids, you know, all of that stuff. Uh, the extent to which these characters have really um, been important to people, it's beyond a paycheck, it's beyond an action figure. It's a very cool thing to be able to to see how how deeply people connect with them. It's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, I was uh, looking up uh, some of your roles here uh, a little while ago, and I noticed that you were in two movies that I watched multiple times as a child. Wow. And that was what? you were cop number four in Mannequin. Oh, was I? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember mannequin. So after, after a thousand it, commercials, I'm sure this all becomes a blur. <laughs> but that movie, I remember in the '80s, like just watching that movie. Mm -hmm. It was on all the time, and I just yes, it, it, was. it was so funny to, to put it yeah. together that you were in that movie. Like for oh, a, I can't. I have to go back and check. I thank you very much. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <laughs> and also, the big one was uh, uh, when you were combing the desert in uh, oh, baseball. In, uh, Space balls, wow. yeah. That's a movie I watched religiously because I, I was a huge Star Wars fan, and then Mel Brooks wow. comes along and just totally rips it apart in the best way possible. It was amazing. How how yeah. was it? Do you remember being on the set uh, and out in the desert or wherever well, you got? Actually, yeah. And to be fair, I was not. That is not me on camera. I'm the one uh. that voices. So, yes, that was yours truly, um, voicing that particular actor and a couple of other spots. What I mainly remember it was two days that I worked on uh, post production on Spaceballs. But what I remember the most, of course, was meeting Mr. Brooks. Oh, but the group with whom I was working was remarkable. Um, it was Phil Hartman, um, oh, wow, Cartwright, who is Bart Simpson, mm -hmm. um, Corey Burton, who's a wonderful actor, whom you guys would know best probably as um, Count Dooku. Uh, in um, Star Wars, uh, oh, the Clone Wars. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a remarkable actor. He's also now Ludwig von Drake for Disney. Has been doing that for decades. A remarkable talent. Um, John Paragon, who was Jabi the Genie in uh, Pee Wee. And, oh wow! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I think it might have even been Lorraine Newman from SNL because she was done with SNL by that time. But uh, it was a, folks from the Groundlings. And um, uh, Phil Hartman was one of my best pals and um, was seminal in helping me uh, be comfortable with um, a lot of improv. Um, Phil was, we know what he ended up being. Right. And um, just an incredibly talented guy. I used to refer to, him as, refer to Phil as terrifyingly inspirational because at the same time that you know he was i think six or eight years older than i and so when i met him he was just starting to really kick the hell out of hollywood and this was before peewee and before snl uh, but jesus a profoundly gifted guy and he really helped me find my place because uh, i remember just being blown away like everyone by his talent um, and it was terrifying because I thought, I, I can't do that. And it was Phil who said, you don't have to, man. You got to find the best version of Rob. And Phil really helped me find um, the tools to, to do that. Um, just a remarkable talent and a very, a very nice guy and a good friend. Um, so, yeah, it was a, a pretty remarkable group of actors. And I got to hang out with Mel. It was pretty neat. <laughs> Gosh, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, just just out of curiosity, obviously, with, with all these roles that you've done, has there been a, a role that you haven't done yet that you've been looking to do as far as maybe a favorite character from the past or anything like that? Or whether, you know, a comic book character, is there someone that, you know, you're obviously you, you're at you're at you're 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 on the mount rushmore of voice acting oh, thank we you. all know that <laughs> uh like i said jerry and i grew up with you and uh, just having you on the show like i still have i'm like goosebumps all oh bless your heart well thank <laughs> you your sleeve will <laughs> <laughs> well th this arm's still good so i got i got, oh, goosebumps. You got nice tat work um <laughs> thank you I, uh, is, is there a role that uh that 
you're, you know, just interested in, in maybe possibly one day doing. God, what a great, you guys are, no wonder you got a successful podcast. Thanks, <laughs> I'm flattered that you said successful. <laughs> We're successful. <laughs> no, everything's relative. Trust me. I, yes, I have yeah. a podcast too, and I did it for years as a total labor of love. And it took me, uh, I don't know, five, six years to monetize it. Right. But Talk I never did it. Yeah, I just yeah. talking tunes and I did it because it was a freaking riot. Right. Um, and then I did a version of it for Nerdist and they were kind enough to pay me. But man, I was doing it for years just because I had these great friends and and I could do it. And it was a blast. Um, but I have a uh, I have a, a, a character that I almost got to do. Okay. And it was one of those that got away and, and the producers made absolutely the right choice. I had a couple of callbacks for Philip J. Fry and Futurama. Oh, wow. And it was between Charlie Schlatter, uh, Billy West and yours truly. And Billy got the job and they made absolutely the right choice. Billy's a, a very dear friend of my family's. I've known Billy for 25 years and you know, what else do you need to say? Billy West, he's yeah. also, you know, thank you very much for your kind words, but I would put Billy up there before yours truly. And, and um, he's the one who is Philip and Zoidberg and, um, um, oh God, what, is that Brannigan? Crazy talent, crazy talent. Professor. Um, Farnsworth. Yes. Billy does them all and just so goddamn talented. He really is. <laughs> He's, but, so, he's definitely on Mount Rushmore for sure. Yeah, and, and I, um, I, I got really close. It was down to the three of us. Billy got the job. And I got to tell you, when I saw the show, I saw the pilot. I'm a fan of the show. Who isn't? Um, they made the right choice. Billy, uh, I was really good. Billy was better. And um, uh, the choices he made for not only – fry but be, you know as is often the case with me it happened with animaniacs i got cast as yakko and then pinky worked out and also dr scratch and sniff on that show right but, um billy did the same thing with zap and barnsworth and zoidberg you never know when in in his case it was uh Matt Groening saying, hey, Billy, what do you have for Zoidberg? And Jesus Christ, he came up with this cross between Lou Jacoby and, and um, um, oh, God, what's his name? Um, remember, the, 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 I forgot his name, the wonderful old Borscht Belt comedian. Um, I'll remember it. But anyway, you see my point. Yeah. Billy, they were able to throw a couple of uh, extra characters at Billy, mm -hmm. and um, he just freaking killed it. My buddy, my friend, the brain, Maurice Lamarche, um, is like the ultimate utility player on that show. He's done, I don't know how many ancillary characters on Futurama for which he won two back-to-back -back primetime Emmys, let alone his work as the brain. I mean, he's super gifted. So that is one that I wish I had gotten, but with the complete understanding that Mr. Groening made the right choice. Um, I would love someday to do, um, I think like a lot of actors, I love the Joker because there's so much you can hang your hat on with the Joker. There's so much stuff you can grab. Um, but that's having fallen in love with Mark Hamill's Joker. Right. So my son's age, you guys are probably in that same, my son is 35, 34, 35. We're around there. Yeah, we're around there. <laughs> we're, we're 40, but yeah, we'll, we'll take 30. It's in the same general ballpark. And um, for my son, if he, and he's by his own admission, if he were ever to be on a desert island and had to watch Batman the rest of his life, he would choose the animated version. For him, Batman is Kevin Conroy and the Joker is Mark. Yeah. Um, and that's high praise, you know, and I, so I would love a shot at that too, just because I love that character, but it's pretty tough to get any better than what Mark has done. Obviously, you know, Heath Ledger did a great version and all of that, but man, Mark did it for 20 years yeah. with Kevin. And it's a fantastic 
um, iteration of that show. So that's probably one I'd like a crack at. But man, if I were to die right now, it would be inconvenient for you. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've had a remarkable run. And, and I'm now I'm getting to do Animaniacs and Pinky in the Brain again. Yeah. So I think that's a great segue. Why don't we get into that? So how excited are you to be able to do these iconic characters again? And not just obviously for our generation, which grew up with that, but obviously I, I have a 19 year old daughter and I have, you know, young nieces and nephews to be able to do it for a whole new segment. Like how does that just like, how do you rack your brain, uh, your brain about that? Uh, or my pinky, thank you very much. <laughs> um, I, it is, it really is impossible for me to kind of verbalize how un overwhelming it is. Uh, anytime that you get a chance to revisit something that has turned out to be arguably iconic with the King of Hollywood, again, mm -hmm. Mr. Spielberg is now, what, 72, 73 years old? No crushing it. For, for Steven Spielberg to say, hey, man, I think there's an audience to do this again, exponentially larger than the first time when the show became a huge success. And, and when we do it, although we're in this era of celebrities and movie stars doing animated characters and by the way i have no problem with that i no sour grapes brad pitt didn't know anybody when he came to hollywood either good for him right, nor, right. like you know, acting job did, is an um, acting job you right know? yeah nor did um ryan reynolds i love ryan reynolds i don't know him but he's very successful in in sonic good for him yep. right i have no problem with that it's hollywood it's free enterprise if you're a, a producer and you want to spend half a million bucks to get Brad Pitt to be the talking dragon and you could hire Billy or me or DiMaggio or Maurice um, for a lot less money. Right. It's your money. I got no problem with it. <laughs> but to have Steven Spielberg, the absolute shoe in as the king of Hollywood. Yeah. For him to say, okay, Hulu, you guys want to pony up the dough. Amblin, Warner Brothers, and Hulu are going to bring this show back and Pinky in the Brain. But just so you know, Hulu, we're not going to cast Liam Neeson as the brain. We're not going <laughs> to cast Russell Brand as Pinky. It's going to be Maurice LaMarche and Rob Paulson. And by the way, Yakko, Wacko, and Dot are going to be Rob and um, Jess Harnell and Tress McNeil. That is such an incredible compliment wow. from Mr. Spielberg. Uh, he could have called Liam Neeson to be the brain. And he would have said, of course, but it's not about that. You guys know that because you have a podcast that honors pop culture. Mm -hmm. It is about the authenticity of the characters. Exactly. It's not just about a rating point. Or, you know, the fact is that as we already addressed, when people find out who I am, they not only get happy, but I'm, I'm telling you the God's honest truth, boys, some people get tearful because those characters are so profoundly important to millions of fans. And, be, and the reason they're important is because collectively they've been created by a bunch of talented people. I'm good at my job, but I don't draw them and I don't write them. The people who do are really gifted. And when it works, it is timeless. I don't care if it's Bugs. I don't care if it's Yakko and Pinky. I don't care if it's The Simpsons. I don't care if it's Winnie the Pooh. When it works, it's timeless. And you guys are in the middle of pop culture and you're expert at it. And you know what I'm talking about. It, it's not about a celebrity voicing them. The characters are the celebrities. I get that. I am not an, a fine artist. I am not um, a writer. I'm a really good singer and a really good actor. 
said, Jesus Christ, I ought to be. I've been doing it for 40 <laughs> years. You know? but, but I'm preaching to the choir. Your audience knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. It wouldn't have helped the show to have movie stars. Right. Unless one of us was dead or couldn't do it, or the movie star had been instrumental in creating the character. You know what I mean? So yeah, it Steve, wouldn't make sense for the for the celebrity right. movie exactly movie stars to be in this role. Yeah, Stephen knows, and Hulu knows that we can all do it. Mel Blanc did Bugs and Daffy and Tweety and everything till he was eighty. So, as long as I can do it, and as long as I haven't missed it, uh, thank God Stephen gets it. You know, because my my suspicion is that it might have been kind of fun for a little bit, but it wouldn't have been the same. So we have this wonderful window of time in which Tress, Jess, Maurice, and Rob are at the top of their game. Doesn't matter what we look like. Tress is stunning, but it doesn't matter. It's not about that. It's about authenticity. And I'll be damned, it worked. Um, it's really good. And not only do we have two seasons in the can, one of which has been airing since November, the second 13 will air this year, and we just got picked up for a third, a third season because we're the number one rated show on Hulu. God. And that's a big deal. Yeah. Um, so you're looking at a very grateful showbiz lottery winner, and I know it. I know how lucky I am. I really do. Um, and when you know that you have the, uh, the backing of Steven Spielberg, it, don't bet against him. And you know what? It worked beautifully. It's so good. And I cannot tell you how proud I am of the show. It's, it's an amazing thing to be a part of. Gosh, that's great. The, the, the passion coming off the mic and the, oh, and it's utterly authentic. Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> if you're faking this, then you are one hell of an actor. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I have never had the pleasure until today of meeting you two boys mm. and to be able to sit here and share it with you is a big deal, certainly. And and the fan base, I am blown away by how fans respond. But um, I'm living this dream. And I, we all thought about, wouldn't it be great because we're in this era of reboot? But a couple of years ago, when Mr. Spielberg threw that out through um, Sam Register, the, the current head of Warner Brothers Animation, mm -hmm. uh, when that was a kind of a dream and Steven was like, Hey man, we're kicking this idea around. What do you think? It, this is what I haven't shut up since you guys were kind enough to. <laughs> no, that's what I love about it. Please. <laughs> this is the only time I get tongue tied. <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, you guys are in this business. How many times has this happened? Like this many right. where you have the most well-known producer, if not in the history of show business, but pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. Huge. Right. Who says to Sam register at Warner Brothers, what do you think, Sam? And then Sam says, what do you think, Rob, Tress, Jess, and Maurice? What do you think, Hulu, Apple, Netflix, mm -hmm. Amazon, and Hulu bit? And they're happy they did. It's a remarkable thing to be part of. And it's very rare, very rare when actors in their 50s and 60s, who are just like when they were younger, not limited by this. I'm a better actor than I was the first go around. And then to get a shot at it again, right? 40 piece orchestra with people who are my best friends in the world, with writers who grew up watching it and totally get it. Yeah. It never happens. This is unbelievable. And the happy ending, or not ending, because we're keep, you know, we're going to keep going. The upshot of all of it is that we reached the bar and some might say we've even gone past it, which is a huge compliment, not only to Tom Ruger and the original crew, but Wellesley Wild, our new showrunner and the crew of writers that he and Mr. Spielberg have hired. They totally get it. They knew how to retool it, not to lose the ethos of what made Pinky and the Brain and Animaniacs arguably iconic, but to retool it for the 2020s. Right. And 
acknowledge that things have changed and be self-aware. They absolutely nailed it. And I, it's, it's mind blowing to be part of it. Awesome. Wow, God. this is amazing. I I'm mean, a, I'm like so in shock. I know on this show. is so cool. <laughs> um, I'm just so great. <laughs> I was gonna jump to uh, um, not quite a serious topic, but uh, I'll go ahead yeah. and do it. Um, what do uh, your British fans think of your British accent? Oh well, I have to tell you that so far, <laughs> I have I've not had anybody really go out of their way to say you're not English. <laughs> Um, in fact, I've had quite the opposite. I've had many friends and fans from across the pond who have said, man, I, you know, I didn't know that you were really not, you're really um, a colonist. You're, really, <laughs> you're, uh, well, you're really, really an American. It's hugely flattering. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I think that is a testament to um, the, again, it's not false modesty. Right. I'm, I'm really good at my job. I'm very comfortable. I don't think I'm as good as I'm going to be when I'm older, because like uh, Paul Newman once said in a really wonderful quote, um, this was just a couple of years before he died, but he said, you know, I don't think I really got it as an actor till I was 70. And that is wonderful news for a guy like me, because I'm going to be 65. But I am literally only limited by my imagination. And un unless or until I start to lose it, I embrace young folks. I learn all the time. I am smart enough to know what I'm not smart at. My ego never enters into the picture. If a producer will give me the room to say, you know, I'm not sure about this. I think Yakko might, or I think my character might. Uh, it is a deeply collaborative effort. So. That is to say that um, I've learned a lot. I've learned uh, the nuances of uh, Pinky and the best way to tweak it so that it's authentic. Um, and so when I have folks who grow up in the UK and, um, and actor friends, British actor friends, Carrie always is a good friend, um, other uh, uh david Tennant, i've had the great good fortune of working with and i did a scottish character on um uh, a series of disney movies uh tinkerbell movies in which um i play a character who is uh, who is scottish and uh, have the good fortune of working with uh, um david and other scottish actors and i work very hard to make sure i can uh, you know try to get that as close as possible <laughs> but um i have a good ear and i am i'm not afraid of jumping in and i have no problem with a producer saying it's a little off the mark not at all i i love it when somebody can say hey listen to this i think this is closer to what you're looking for great it's never excuse me do you know who the hell I am? No. <laughs> you know who you're talking to here? Rob Paulson, the diva. <laughs> Where's my trailer? It's, it's garbage. It's garbage. And I know too many people. You know what, you guys? What I've had is, uh, in addition to the privilege of, talk, privilege of talking to you guys, and, and make no mistake, it is a privilege for which I've worked very hard to be in the position in which I find myself. Um, but because I've gotten to work with Mr. Spielberg, now this is the sixth, the sixth time on which I've worked with Mr. Spielberg on a unique project. Right. Um, and getting to see how Mr. Spielberg, Warren Beatty, David Tennant, uh, other actors, professional athletes, people I've gotten to meet in social situations and gotten to know them. And I've gotten to literally hang out and befriend and spend precious time with people who can behave any goddamn way they want to. They have all the money right. they would ever need. They have all the fame. They have all the juice, all the pull that they would ever need. And you know how they behave? Like you guys. Oh. They're really 
down to earth, kind, nice people, much bigger stars to the extent that Pinky or Yakko or Raphael or Donatello or Carl Weezer or Mighty Max or whatever, to the extent that those characters are stars, they behave the same way that you would want them to behave. So shame on me if I do get to a point where I say, wait a minute, you know who I am? <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> the people who can behave that way, in my experience, don't. Right. And so when I run across someone who does fancy themselves, a man, young man or young man, a woman who has, uh, you know, generated a lot of, a lot of juice, they're really famous and they're 30 or 27, 40, whatever. And they, and, and it's rare, but when they do behave that way, my response is, I hope you save your money, kid, because Hollywood doesn't need you. They don't need me. And were I to, you know, die or when I die, if I'm still working, it's going to be like, well, geez, that's a shame. Rob seemed like a nice guy. Okay. I reckon we better recast. So uh. it, it happens and we know people and it doesn't often, you know, they're caught in a bad moment and hopefully they apologize and they move on. Mm -hmm. But if they, if they start to cultivate a reputation for being a pain in the ass, I have yet to meet anyone who is so talented that they can justify behaving that way because the people who literally could get away with it don't. And I, um, I have no patience with it. I've been in Hollywood for 42 years. I'm a proud blue collar worker in the dream factory. I have a lot of very famous, very wealthy friends and every single one of them to a man and a woman are the sort of people you'd want to hang with. It's pretty cool, pretty cool to witness. So, I will never behave that way because I have no reason to, you know? Yeah. We, we yeah. sort of at the last con we went to, uh, we ran into someone, uh, just like that. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Henry Winkler, we met yeah. him yeah. and he was an absolute joy oh to gosh. meet. That he was so down life. to earth. He oh, came out into the great. line yeah. and talked to everyone in line yeah. before he even got up before there. Before he even got paid. Such a class yeah. act. Totally. Yeah. With a capital C, I have had the good fortune uh, to meet Henry uh, both in in um, auditioning for him. He was directing commercials and I auditioned for him. I didn't get the job; didn't matter. He yeah. was delightful, and I know that he was like that with every actor who came to read. One of my best friends in Hollywood is a guy named Jim Meskimen, who is a remarkably talented actor, mm -hmm. and his mom is um 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 oh gosh Marion. Mrs. C, Mrs. Cunningham, Marion um, Ross, um, right? He, who played Mrs. Cunningham on Happy Days. Right, okay. right. Ron Howard's mother. And she's now, I think, around 90. And I'm telling you, the nicest lady and the stories about Henry, Henry Winkler from everyone in Hollywood yeah. are exactly what you said. Everyone knows that Henry Winkler is the real deal. God, that's the nicest. There's down to earth. Ronnie Howard's the same way. I did a movie with um, uh, Don Most, Donnie Most, who paid, played Ralph on Happy Days. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Same thing. Great guy. And I think that was just part of the um, the whole vibe of the show. Everybody said, and and to a man and woman, when when the subject of Henry Winkler comes up exactly what they say so it's authentic it's a real deal yeah it, it definitely came across that way to us when we went I mean, and you've obviously been to to many a comic-con oh, yeah it was a little bit I can't wait so we can get back oh, to me trust me that was going to be one Preaching of our next questions coming up believe me we're we're, we're losing our mind I over here <laughs> it can't get you know. i don't care if they buy anything man you know i right the the, the organizers have to you know, they have to make the people whom they bring, sure. we have to charge something to offset the cost. But we always say, I don't care if you buy anything. If you're willing to stand in line, I want to meet you. Right. Glorious. The most glorious part of my, my work is to get to see how people respond when Raphael shows up. You know, it's a cool thing. <laughs> Great. 
<laughs> exactly. And I mean, we, uh, Jerry and I have been uh, fortunate enough to go to New York Comic Con a few mm. years. And when we met Henry Winkler, it was actually here in North Raleigh. Carolina and Raleigh. So it's a little bit less yeah, it's, unconventional, but yeah, New York, just, Chicago, just, Atlanta, yeah, San yeah. Diego, they're just, it's madness at the big level. Oh yeah. And I mean, don't get me wrong. It's still pretty busy here, but oh, yeah. to actually see the celebrity in front of their booth without yeah. a security around, like we literally walked up and we were dressed up as the cast of Bob's Burgers just because we, we love Bob's Burgers. And <laughs> uh, it's, it's very easy for me to do. And I, he, I he, was Linda. He was a great Linda. He really was. <laughs> He was a very, very attractive. Linda. Came right up to me yeah. too, like, "Hey, how are you doing?" Yeah, and just That's just walked great. right up to him, and he was so great. And and at that time, he literally just won the what was it, the Emmy? Yeah, for, for Barry. Barry. And oh. we were like, "Hey, listen, congratulations! By the way, we we love you on Barry as well as everything else." And he was just like, you know, thank you, thank you. He's like, "Do you guys want a picture? Do you not want a picture?" You know, Barry, he was oh, he was so very kind. So no, and and you you are so right. It is completely authentic. You yeah. guys, in a social situation, Henry's the same way. Just That's a awesome. great guy, down to earth. Like, oh my God, how many times do you think people have said, Henry Winkler, LaFons, hey, hey. <laughs> hey. How many times do you think that's happened? Right. A million? Oh and gosh, it's Henry really, probably. Henry will embrace that as the first time it's ever happened. And right. that's, that's what's important. That's why he's a big star. Because he gets, he gets how lucky he is. He understands that he's part of, of pop culture. He's part of the history of our, well, of the culture of the world. Yeah. And he's very respectful, as am I, of, of the position we, in my case, tangentially hold mm -hmm. in, in, in a lot of hearts and minds of millions of people. And so... He never takes that for granted. He is the real damn deal. And it's a, I'm so glad to hear that because it is yet another example of, of what a wonderful man he is. <laughs> That's awesome. Let's, um, we, do, we do have a couple questions coming through the, uh, the uh, Facebook stream. Hey. First and foremost, um, have you ever done any audiobooks or like navigation voices? I know that uh, sometimes like Waze brings in character voices, things like that. Have you ever done anything like that? And if you haven't, are there any Please books? do. Yeah, yeah, please do. <laughs> It'd be great to hear the brain on Waze getting, giving me oh, directions. <laughs> or Ricky, I mean. That's a great idea, Bri. I am. Um... I have not. The only audio book I've done actually is my own. I, I did okay. a, uh, wrote a book a couple of years ago. My co-writer and I, I should say, wrote a book called Voice Lessons, How a Couple of Ninja Turtles, Pinky and an Animaniac Saved My Life. And um, I did uh, the audio book of my own book. Um, but I, I thought it'd be so cool to have uh, Carl Weezer from Jimmy Neutron. Oh, <laughs> yes. God, yes. Saying, you know, uh, all right, get on at the right, at the right, make a right, <laughs> get on the Lincoln Boulevard and take it down to the Starbucks where you should get a croissant and finish it <laughs> and then keep going. But I would also like to get one where, you know, Yakko's a bit of a smart ass and says, um, okay, get on the 405 and go down there and then you get off at, at uh, Santa Monica Boulevard and make a right. Now nah, I make a left. I was just messing with you. <laughs> or was I? Or was I messing with you? Make a left. What happened, you idiot? <laughs> so yeah, I would be all for that. It's it's a blast. And when, in fact, when I did my audio book, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of you know the characters show up, and the audience loves it because it's pretty cool when um, Rob breaks the news to Pinky that I've got cancer, and um, and uh, I'm fine, by the way, but I had throat cancer. But it was very cool as a plot device, the way that my co-writer, Mike, who is a full-time, real-time, you know, professional writer, who thought of to say, why don't we break the news to Pinky about the fact that you've got throat cancer and Pinky, you can riff with Pinky and he can say, is it going to kill you? And said, I don't know. Um, and then, and it was, it was very interesting. It was interesting, funny. And also a little bit um, surreal for people to go, oh, my God, Pinky says, well, you, will you be able to do this? 
I don't know. Well, what, if there's a reboot, you know, all of that stuff. <laughs> right. it, it was very effective. Right. So yeah, it's pretty cool when you get a guy who does cartoon voices to have him show up in the, in the audio book. It worked pretty well. I would love to do the, the navigational voice. I think it'd be a blast. I think you should have your own, just like, not just a specific character, but have like the Rob Paulson wave. What is it? Ways? Oh, ways. Yeah, yeah. Ways kit. Where you can do idea, different Brian. ones. Hey, I'm, I'm trying to make you some money. Up here, <laughs> not, that you know, not that you don't need me, but you know, we're, we're here working for you as well. We're big fans. Thank this you. is something we can do. Something we would love to hear. Yes. <laughs> Great. I got to find out how that works. I, I don't <laughs> I don't we'll have, know. We'll have our people call your people and we'll figure this out. Yeah. And by our people, we mean us. Yes. So we'll- <laughs> we're our own people. These people are, you're my people now. So we're all yes. people Love it. What do you got there, Jared? I did have one question. Uh, I know uh, the, you know, the voiceover world is pretty uh, competitive. Was there any uh, other voice actor that was uh, maybe uh, beat you out for uh, a couple roles, maybe a, a a voice act, uh, voice actor rival in the industry. Well, yeah, and and it is a um, a team of rivals, as it were. I mean, there's definitely a lot of honor among <laughs> thieves because, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Billy West, John DiMaggio, Maurice LaMarche, Tress McNeil, Tara Strong. You can pretty much throw anyone out there. Mark Hamill. Kevin Conray, they're all very good friends. All of the people I mentioned have been to my home, birthday parties. I've been to theirs on more than a number of occasions. Um, And so, yeah, we compete and it is very competitive, Uh, but there's always room. There was room when I showed up and I, I love it when young people show up because firstly, they're quite enamored by you know, me and my pals, just like I was when I got to work with Mel Blanc and June Foray and Don Messick and Jonathan Winters and over and over, you know, Carol Channing and John Aston over and over again. I became friends with John Aston long before Sean Aston. And it's the coolest thing in the world. Seth Green, all these actors who are my very best pals in the world, but they're really freaking talented, mind-blowingly talented. Um, So yeah, we compete and we get jobs and lose jobs to one another. It's just the nature of the beast. Um, We don't take it personally. Uh, I think that, well, like I said, I already acknowledged that Billy won the role of Philip J. Fry, which in addition to the red M&M is probably Billy's, well, and, and, um, um, Oh God, uh, uh, what's the one that used to be on Nickelodeon that John um, John, um, John Critical Lucy directed and created? Um, oh God, Ren and Stimpy. Billy, right? Did, yeah, yeah, he was definitely. Yeah, Billy great. did ultimately did both Ren and Stimpy. Right. right? So Billy is the real freaking deal. Um, but I would give blood for Billy, and he would do the same for me. I love William. I love him. He's I mean, right here, same with Mo. Yeah. Um, so we have, I mean, we have a, a deep abiding respect, friendship, and we do really root for one another. That is not, I, I can honestly say, having done a lot of on-camera stuff, while I have a lot of friends who are on-camera talent and I love them as much as I love my, on, uh, my voice acting friends, there is to be sure at least when I was starting out, there is a much more um, uh, competitive in a, in a more, uh, I don't know, how do I use the, not, it's not cutthroat, but there's not nearly the, the friendly vibe as there is with respect to animation. Mm-hmm. And I can only imagine that it's because there's more on the line. Um, whether it's, and it's much harder for women when women, and and I know so many women who are gifted, but really beautiful in the traditional sense, stunningly beautiful women. The sad truth is that as they get to be in their thirties or forties, 
you know, that gets to be a problem on camera. And I hate it. Right. Because is it fair? No. But if I had young girls, daughters uh, who had to deal with what is the bar that they're all supposed to, not supposed to, th that society, uh, uh, social media, whatever, you know, the pressure that they're put on to be the ideal, whether it's the Kardashians, whom I have no problem with, I don't hate them, any of that stuff. But you know my, you see my point. Right. Yeah. It's an impossible yeah. bar. Right. Right? Nobody looks like Kylie Jenner. <laughs> right. right. Right? How do you, how do you reconcile that with your 12-year-old daughter? Right. How do you say, how do you comfort them at night going, oh my God, the homecoming cheerleader looks like, you know, Justin Bieber's wife. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, right, right. How do you compete with that? Yeah. You can't. It's not real. Yeah. Most people, most beautiful women don't look like that. Most young, handsome men don't look like Brad Pitt or, you know, whomever right. the flavor of the month is, you know? So that side of the business is very tough. Yeah. And you're constantly doing this. You're constantly going, oh, my God, am I, is my six pack turning into, you know, a, 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 a barrel of booze, you know? <laughs> a little keg. Yeah, a little keg. How do I continue that? So I'm rambling, but you see my point. Yeah. That is not any of the issue with respect to voice acting. Yeah. It doesn't mean that Tara Strong and, um, you know, Tress McNeil and and uh, all the other, Jen Hale, they're beautiful women. Yeah. I think that, that Helen Mirren is stunning. Yeah, mm -hmm. me too. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're, not, you're not the only one. <laughs> yeah. He ain't lying. <laughs> but in my realm, in this realm, it's all about your chops. It's all about your talent. It's all about your willingness to play. Can you sing in character? Can you improvise in character? Can you come up with a different dialect? Can you, this character has got to be an authentic South African. Can you find that with the character and then sing in it? That what, that's what it's about. Not about how big your muscles are, how big your boobs are. It's not about that. So that aspect of it, while we all want to look good, we all have vanity. I, I want to look as, as good as I can look. But it's not about, it's not germane or integral to getting the job. Right. Mm -hmm. so right. Straight that, talent. Yeah, that takes a lot of pressure off. And so while I'm rambling about the very simple question, but it's important because I have this wonderful opportunity to to share authentic really good yeah and we want you to share it i, I have a daughter that's in film school so believe me i know her and all her friends are watching this like this is oh, sure. and believe and, me this is not rambling to us no it's <laughs> stuff, it's stuff they need to hear yeah, yeah. And I, so please I appreciate continue. That because it's 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 important um that the 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 wonderful aspect about voice acting specifically is that just like theater or film, both of which I've done a lot, TV, commercials, whatever, improv with the Groundlings or Second City or Upright Citizens Brigade or Acme Comedy Theater, whatever it is, it's about talent. Acting is acting, whether it's voiced acting, which is small v, large a. The reason you guys dig Pinky or uh, Homer or uh, Philip J. Fry, or Zap Brannigan, or Bob's Burgers, is because the actors who portray the roles are good actors. The reason Bugs and Daffy and, and Rocky and Bullwinkle have lasted for decades, long past the actors being gone, you can go back and watch Bugs Bunny from the 50s, or Rocky and Bullwinkle from the early 60s, and enjoy it as much as a new episode of Animaniacs or The Simpsons or Family Guy because they're beautifully executed. It's not a secret. It, and so I tell young actors, look, um, I'm not, it's not self-aggrandizement. Watch these shows after I'm dead. It's not about that. It's about, um, it's about acting. If I weren't good at my job 
and Tress and Maurice and the scripts weren't solid and the music music wouldn't wasn't solid these characters wouldn't have lasted 25 years and wouldn't have been worthy of Mr. Spielberg and a pile of Hulu's money to do it again it would have been worth it um so that's the lesson it's about acting it's about authenticity it's about passion and execution and being willing to learn and get better till you die or you retire, which is fine too. But um, that is the good news for everybody that you don't have to stop getting better. Um, right. If it's about the way you look and that you have to be in really great shape all the time, then that's just part of the deal. And then you accept that as you start getting older, you have to decide whether or not it's important for you to have a little nip and tuck or a little wrestling or maybe get, you know, get the neck done. <laughs> <laughs> and that comes, as right. you guys can attest to, yeah. that comes with its own set of issues too. Because we can all look at men and women who are universally famous mm -hmm. and then they go away for a few months and they come back having had work done. And right. if it's not done well, or people don't ease into it, you go, oh my God, honey, I'm going to freeze this. Do you know who this is? <laughs> right. So, you, I mean, it happens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it happens now, and you have a sweet little girl. I know that she knows, and maybe you've heard her talk about it. People who are talking about and talking to their mom and dad about getting work done in their teens yeah luckily oh. mine is not like that but yeah no, no. i get but, where you're coming from no there. no yeah. but it's she crazy. probably knows people oh yeah yeah she does you guys yeah I, and I, i'm like you're you're beautiful like you're beautiful the way you're that beautiful you are. exactly i don't even like, know how to read i i have one child and he's a grown man but mm -hmm. you see my point yeah as a father i don't know how do you how do you have that chat with your daughter right yeah I know mom and daddy, but this, you know, she's the homecoming queen and everybody loves her and her parents let her, you know, get a little work and she's going to be seven, 17. Yeah, Holy no. shit. Mm -hmm. It happens every day around the country. I don't know how, I, I really don't know how to, how to handle that. Right. And because I see people all the time whom I would look at as beautiful as they get older understanding that that's just the nature of the beast meryl streep right all of them um yep. um th there are so many gina davis older and older and older but still and all still and all it's about their talent yep. and what do you do when you're a young actress and you haven't yet made your mark and people don't know how good you are but now you're 35 right. and your agent says you're putting on a couple of pounds putting a couple of pounds my fighting weight is 118. I'm at, a, I'm at 125. <laughs> right. But you're 37. What? Right. That makes me nuts. Yeah. And I hate that about the business. Um, so anyway, fortunately, I don't have to deal with it. And <laughs> I, I love that animation is an option for yeah. any actor, whether you're famous or not. My advice is take any chance you have to act, whether it's just with your brain and your voice and a, and a character that you hope will, will really find an audience or your whole body. And I hope that you can, that the business allows you to, to grow into your body and your face right. with grace because we all are going to get old and it's part of the freaking deal, man. So I, I, I get, it's one of the things that really, I get passionate about because I have so many dear women friends who are so goddamn talented mm. and and all of a sudden they're kind of having to to worry about whether or not they've got a couple extra pounds well Jesus who doesn't right you know? so yeah it's a really remarkable thing to have to try to compete with social media and oh my god did you see how did you see Rob Paulson <laughs> I mean, last time I saw him was before his cancer, and he sounds great, but he's lost fifty pounds. And my God, he looks like a skeleton. Well, that's just the nature of the beast. 
Nobody cares what I look like, thank God. And I did have cancer and I got through it and I'm doing it again and nobody would have known. The biggest compliment I can get you guys is not that Rob sounds great for having had stage three throat cancer and a bunch of radiation and, and uh, chemo. Right. What I, what I love is when people say, wow, I never knew that Rob Paulson had cancer. He didn't miss a beat in right. Hannah yeah. and Pinky in the Brain. He sounds great, just like Tress and Jess and Maurice. I don't want people to say, he sounds pretty good for having throat cancer. Right. And they're not mm -hmm. saying that. That is a testament to my doctors and the times in which we live. So thank you for letting me ramble about that. <laughs> no, no. Like I said, this is, I, I'm like, you were talking about like fans meeting you and almost in tears. Like this is incredibly this inspirational is to us. Jerry was the one that actually brought that to my attention because thank I, you. As, as much, a, you know, I was not that I was doing much research because like I said, we grew up with you, but he was the one that brought up to me about that you had cancer yeah. and, oh, and battled through it and all that. And I was like, what? Seriously? And at the end of the day, I, yeah. I don't think I don't think you sound great for someone that had cancer. Like you still sound fantastic. You sound like you did back in the nineties. Yeah. I mean you sound yeah. great. Yeah. I am. There's something that you should see the inside of the water tower. It's still <laughs> yeah. just like the nineties. Yeah. Um, we do have uh, another question from the fans real quick. Sure. Um, as far as is there a, a a character that you love doing the most? whether right. commercial right. TV, just like a, it, it, even if you have like a top three, right. Uh, the, uh, this is from Christina green. Big shout out to Christina green. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, which character or cartoons did you love doing the most? Uh, my standard answer is the next one because it means I'm working. <laughs> um, I love that. Honestly, you guys, it, I, I've already reminded everyone, mainly myself. I have had by any measure a remarkable career and i'm still doing it every day um an embarrassment of riches honestly i never i wear long sleeves all the time because i'm black and blue from pinching myself <laughs> um if i had to do it's pretty tough not to go with animaniacs um and in that realm i would have to say both yakko and pinky because yakko is just a great it's just a great character, especially in the context of the other two. Mm -hmm. But I, I, as I said, I was a singer first and uh, I have gotten to sing so many unbelievably wonderful songs. Not only United States, Canada, Mexico, Panama, Haiti. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it's a great big universe and we're all really puny. We're just tiny little specks about the size of Mickey Rooney. You might think that you're essential. Try inconsequential. It's a big universe and you're not. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I go on and on and on. And Dr. Scratch and Snip, wake up. It's late. It's 20 minutes. Up. I don't know what to say. The monkeys won't do. And Pinky got to sing, a world of cheeses, deliciously made for you and me, flavors like provolone and brie, eat with your thone, it knit the sea. You know, all of those characters got to sing yeah. with a 40 piece orchestra. Right. It, it does not get any better. Um, and that is not even including Raphael in the original show and Donatello <laughs> on Nickelodeon. Some people think that that version in which I got to be Donnie is the quintessential version of Ninja Turtles, right? The 2012 from 2016 on Nickelodeon. And Carl Weezer, uh, uh, of his, and I got to sing as Carl badly because it worked for the character. <laughs> right. But when I signed up for TikTok, I, I noticed that there are 150 million uh, TikToks of people's take I'm Carl Weezer. Wow. Really? Wow. Right? So. They love their Jimmy Neutron. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the, my daughter was three, four years old when it came out. And I tell you, I, I was watching Jimmy Neutron all day, every day. It's a so. great show. It's yeah. very smart. And not to mention um, Gummy Bears and Goof Troop. I was a character called PJ on Goof Troop. I found out recently that a Goofy movie is kind of a, a cult classic it's huge to a lot of people mm -hmm. um so arguably i between donatello Raphael, yakko pinky 
and Carl. I've got five arguably iconic roles that I got to create and I'm the guy. If they go on and I'm replaced or I die and they go on further, somebody will have to pick up the mantle. I got to be the real deal. That's mind blowing. So any one of them would be fabulous. But if I had a pick, it would be Animaniacs because look what's happened with it. Um, it's as it's as big a hit now as it was the first time. Right. And on a brand new platform that was not even a thought when the first show was done with Steven Spielberg, with Tress, Jess and Maurice again. And there are people watching who, when I say, hello, nurse, <laughs> going, you know, in front of their computer screen, or some of them are going, oh, my God, yeah. that reminds me of my, you know, of my mom and dad. We used to watch it, and they're both gone now. Or it reminds me of my little boy, and now he's in college, and they'll get tearful. It's not about money. It's, and look, I've been rich, and I've been poor. Rich is way better. But it, it's not about money, ratings, or an action figure. It is about a pure expression of love and joy and gratitude, which, like love, often come from the most unexpected places, you guys. In this case, it's a freaking cartoon character. So it just doesn't get any better. And, and if I had to make a choice, that's where it'd be. So I... Uh, I am a very, very lucky guy, and I cannot wait to get a chance to meet you and a lot of these folks who are watching in person when we're done with COVID con. I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, gosh. So, yeah, that's true. I, I, think, I think that's kind of, Jerry, if you want to, you know, go on the, the, the Comic-Con thing, because that, that's our big thing. So, Well, the Comic-Con thing is, you know, we're, we're really missing, you know, the... Uh, yeah the standing in those lines yeah. and you know we we love it we love going we love dressing up mm -hmm. we love being part of the community yep and isn't uh when we get truth? to what's up uh, isn't that the truth i what i love comic-con to me you guys is a microcosm of how we really would like the world to be right 100 percent. people who are on the autism spectrum people who are uh physically challenged mm -hmm. people who often find they're disenfranchised you know in in regular life they go there and they are utterly accepted mm -hmm. i love that i love the fact that there are people who feel like they found their tribe and i cannot get enough of it i live for those moments in which I can meet people who otherwise would feel self-conscious about their weight or about their skin mm -hmm. or about the fact that they're too short or too tall or maybe a little bit, um, you know, they've got some issues with ADHD or they've sure. got to take medication, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. But when they're at a Comic-Con, they're utterly accepted. And they'll, you, I've seen people who will say, hey, um, I'll be happy to hold your place in line if you want to go outside and, and take a breath because this is a little overwhelming. And I, you know, I just I just need to go outside and take my medication. I don't know if I can stand in this line. And I mean, I just really want to meet Mark Hamill, but I don't know if I you know what? I'll hold your place in line. Why don't you go outside and you take your medication? Thank you. And then they come back and they're okay. I see that all the time. Mm -hmm. And I can't get enough of it. I'm so proud to be part of that collective community. And I get to go back to Hollywood, to the best of the best, the best musicians, the best writers, the best animators, the best producers, the best actors. And if I'm the guy who gets the juice, I get to go back and relate these stories to people and say, I'm telling you what, I met a family who was in tears because of what Animaniacs meant to them when they lost one of their children and they got through it. And these people are blown away in Hollywood because they don't get to see this. Right. Mm -hmm. And they don't get a chance to be, you know, the person that folks want to talk to like me. 
but I get to go back there and share these stories. And you guys, it is, it, it's the coolest thing in the world. Like I can't wait to get back at it. Trust me. We can't wait to meet you in person. (laughs) Rob, I did have one more question about a specific show. Uh, It's one of my favorite cartoons of all time. And I saw that you popped up in this role and it was by far like one of the most emotional episodes of the show. I'm talking about the boondocks when you oh, play uh, yeah. Riley's art teacher. How about that? How, how was it uh, working on that episode working? Bob Ross. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how was it working uh, with Aaron Magruder? Um, um, Thank you. That, that so show much. was so good. and But that episode in particular, it was very emotional. It had to do with, yeah. with uh, Riley's parents, sure. and, you know, him getting over that mm-hmm. and, and your character getting him into a little trouble, but then helping him out really, you know. Uh, thank I'm, you for asking. I, uh, I love that. And I love that you were a part of that episode. Thank you. Uh, I was very proud of that. I ended up doing, I think, four or five episodes of the boondocks um and i was not aware of bob ross believe it or not when i got cast (laughs) what yeah (laughs) i I was not um so i learned more about bob now i understand you know what a fixture in pop culture mr ross has become Um, yeah but i love that experience interestingly I have a unique background being an an average kid from Michigan. um, I have a unique circumstance as an adult because uh, my uh, relatively unique because my brother is gay and married to the love of his life, Jim, and they they've been married for, I don't know, eight years, nine years, but they've been together for 20 and they live in Manhattan. My son, Ash, is married to the love of his life, who is a woman from Nigeria. So I, I have a relative, un, relatively unique perspective being an, an old guy from Michigan. When I got the gig uh, with Aaron Magruder, I was very aware of the Boondocks. And um, the cast of Boondocks is primarily African-American. And of course, Aaron is. And so when I got the gig and I knew all about the ethos and the um the background of boondocks the comics from from the comic strips yeah so when i was all of a sudden cast in the show and got to be involved not only in in the show as an actor but involved in the message of the show with respect to how it tackled racism and how that was a very important part of almost every episode uh it was a very interesting circumstance and i loved it because it was the only time in my career so far and i think still in which rob paulson had to deal with subject matter that made me uncomfortable as rob the actor right right if i had to say the n-word and scream it Right. That's what I was being hired for. Not necessarily in that episode, right. but other ones mm-hmm. where I was hired and the, the folks on the other side of the glass are going, yeah, Rob, you really need to. You really need to <laughs> it's Tarantino on the other <laughs> side of the <laughs> other side of the window. Right. And I thought, I, they're paying me to do what they want me to do. So, Rob, you got to step out of your own way. They don't give a shit that it makes you uncomfortable. They hired you to do it. And it was a fascinating experience. So the first one I did was the one you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And it did have a message and it was very impactful. And I, that was one of those episodes. It was also directed by my dear friend, nine time Emmy winning voice director, Andrea Romano. Um, And it was really wonderful to have Aaron and Andrea and his staff speak to me and help me get to the point where it made right. the Bob Ross character really effective. Mm-hmm. And that's where a really good director and Aaron and his knowing what he wanted 
and being willing to to kind of hold my virtual hand you know what i mean and say no no we're, we're good I just, you can do this i want i want you to know what i need and and i and you can and it worked great and i'm so proud of that because it was one of those times when i was hired not to be the wacky cartoon guy not to right. be um um uh Hey Max, it's time to go get goofy. Or <laughs> hey, Jimmy, I think that I got a real crush on your mom. Or, you know, um, hello, nurse. It wasn't about that. I'm hired primarily to be a funny guy or sing, right? So when I was hired, the that and then because it worked, I got to be on I think half a dozen other episodes, and they started to trust me. That's a very big thing for an actor to get to a place where somebody sees I can I can get some pretty deep emotional stuff out of you too. That's not just the funny guy. It's a big deal. Um, so thank you so much, Jerry, for bringing that one up because it really was a, a high point of my career. Because every actor wants to say, Oh, no, no, no. Um, I, I can I can do more stuff. Right. And if you don't believe me, check out a couple of episodes of, of Boondocks. Or an episode I did of Rick and Morty in which I played a dog that said, Oh, yeah! Yes, you were Snowball. Snowball. <laughs> 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 Snuffles. Yeah, at first, pretty funny and wacky. But there was a pretty deep message about the um, the sort of indentured servitude in which we sort of, you know, inadvertently do that to our pets. You know, and, we, and why... Why we know why we get them fixed and all of that, and it's a, it's a, it's on purpose. And okay, but let's be, while we're doing that, let's make sure that we sort of acknowledge that. How would you like it if somebody said, "You know, we really don't want you to procreate, and it's good for you, but we're gonna." And <laughs> fascinating exercise that brilliant writing with Dan Harmon and uh, Justin Royland. I mean, these, those guys are the real deal as well. I love those guys. So it was a really cool exercise. And so thank you very much for bringing up the boondocks. It, yeah. it was very important to me, and I'm really proud of it. Well, one more thing. Is Regina King as cool as we think she is? Oh, totally. <laughs> yeah. And John Witherspoon, too, was like that. He was oh, oh, gosh. All just yeah. really cool. And Regina is, yeah, she's, she's tough in a cool way. Right. Right. So, She's had to deal with a lot of stuff, and um, I'm really thrilled to have had the opportunity to work with her on more than one occasion. She's, she's cool. Yeah. Nice. I nice. knew it. <laughs> yeah, you were right. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Rob, before uh, we sign off here, we definitely want you to hang out a little bit. But for our, our fans out there listening that are going to be listening to this episode here in the next few weeks and that are watching here on Facebook Live, what's the best way for them to find you in terms of websites, social media, what you, what projects you have coming up next? You know, this Thank is you. your time to braggadocious all things Rob right now. <laughs> Rob World. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. I am. Um, well, they can find me on Twitter at Yakko Pinky, all one word, all lowercase Y A K K O P I N K Y. Um, on Instagram, it's Rob underscore Paulson P A U L S E N. Uh, on Facebook, it's Rob Paulson, voice actor. And um, TikTok, it's Rob Paulson three eleven, which is my birthday because somebody already had Rob Paulson. So mm -hmm. R O E P A U L S S E. P A U L S E N three eleven, and um, uh, we've got brand new episodes of Animaniacs coming out, in probably in a couple of months. Not quite sure, but mm -hmm. also another pile of them next year. Um, I am looking uh, talking to people right now about doing my podcast again, Talking Tunes, all of which are available. Um, if the folks want to listen to them or watch them, we did a bunch of video versions of 87 of them on camera with Nerdist. And I believe they're, they're all available on, um, um, oh God, what's it? The, uh, Spotify. So okay. you can go to Spotify and listen and watch. And um, I'm, um, I'm pitching new stuff all the time. So stay tuned, <laughs> as they say. But uh, man, it's a real pleasure. And 
as I always say it, it's the God's honest truth that got me through my cancer experience that laughter is the best medicine. And the cool thing is you can't OD and the refills are free. And it's the goddamn truth. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Laugh from your soul every day, kids. Yeah, oh, Rob, you are so fucking amazing. Again, thank you. Thank you so much. Hang out with us for just a, a second here after after thank we you. wrap this up real quick. Again, for those of you on Facebook Live, those of you listening, uh, the incredible Rob Paulson on here. Uh, again, over 250 animated characters, over a thousand commercials. Just again, Mount Rushmore of <laughs> just. He's up uh, there for yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, I'm at a loss of words right now. I really am. I'm like, I'm so like in shock that we're interviewing her right now. But at the end of the day, uh, be sure to check out our website, popculturepodcast.com. We couldn't make it any simpler for you out there. Just type Woo! popculturepodcast.com. How'd we get that? It, it was there. It was available. <laughs> I didn't have to fight anybody for it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, news, notes, videos, blogs, uh, interviews, of course, movie trailers. And uh, big shout outs to our sponsors, Katie Simmons, the best uh, realtor slash broker in, in, uh, in the Carolinas. You can find her on Facebook at Katie Simmons and Alexander Rose Boutique. Again, big thank you to Rob Paulson. Hang out real quick. Big thank you to our fans out there. And we will see you on the next one. Peace. Yeah! Victory! And anger management? Fuck anger management.